Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at Perfect Hair by Tommy Parrish. This is put out by 2D Cloud. I grabbed this from Partners and Sons. I saw it was on their website and I really like Tommy Parrish's Men I Trust and a short story that I'd seen of Tommy's in Now, I believe. And and actually been pulling uh, some stylistic influence from Tommy for this the book I'm working on now, Bound. Really enjoy the way that Tommy does these really big figures with tiny heads and the distortion on that and the clumsiness of that is kind of influencing the style that uh, the way I designed the character in Bound. I didn't go quite as far with the tiny heads, but I, I kind of took those exaggerated proportions that I've been seeing in Tommy's work and Mo Romanova's work. So I wanted to grab this and this looks like a collection of short stories of Tommy's early work. So probably probably the first thing that got published before Fanographics put out anything. Really enjoy the table of contents here. There's kind of some training the audience on some of the symbolisms that are going to be going throughout the the book, and also this like weird sense of discomfort over bodies, like these drooping weird bodies everywhere that seem to be a part of the story. And I, I just really like how this is a comic itself and it kind of starts training the viewers. It's not just literally like this is what pages you're on or, or the order that the story's in, but it's really a table of the contents. Like here is a table of the contents of the book and starts training you in the way that a table could train you on reading things. So I found that very cool. Um, Tommy style is really, really awesome. This beautiful watercolor stuff. And you can see the distortions on the body I'm talking about with the really kind of big clumsy feeling arms and the tiny heads. That's one of the things that, that I picked up on that I wanted to try and capture. Here you see uh, that you get one of these symbols that you've been shown up at the front. This equals sex, this kind of folded of the body. And then you're also being trained here with these hands open, closed, open, and those symbols show up. And I like that this sex symbol also kind of looks like the butt cheeks, but it kind of also right after the hands looks like the hands close together. So this, this figure is getting out of the shower and messing with their hands and then just kind of playing with their body in general. And there's just those kind of like really nice visual, graphic visual moments that, that carry the stories even when they're a little bit more abstract. Really also enjoyed seeing some straight pencil work here. This kind of stuff really reminded me of what I like about Andrew White's work, who's someone I go on and on about on the channel. And then seeing pages like this that are really, really worked over with all of these cool characters, a ton of stuff going on. And just the way that Tommy is capturing like the loneliness of this character. This looks like uh, the Bart, probably. That's what it looks like to me, like the Dublin Bart station or something. But the character's waiting at, at the train here like really lonely and then all of these people spill out of the train and then on the next page you just go back to the loneliness of it all again. So just really, really good cartooning, really good storytelling and again stylistically something I find really compelling. Here is an interesting trick uh, with the panels, just a formal trick where when all the other panels have the gutters between them, this is two panels that are squished together without a border between them. And it, it makes them, when I first looked at it, it looked like this character's coming down the stairs uh, like that would continue behind the counter and then has wrapped around potentially, but you realize that the stairs are like probably over here and the character's walking by. So I really like that trick of just not putting the, the, the gutter between the panels and letting the reader make some more assumptions about what's going on in the imagery there. Then you have another story here that gets into some like weird sex sex slave stuff that the characters are going through. Uh, this again, this whole book seems very Bay Area to me because that looks like the Bart and this seems like the kind of thing that, that you would get in the Bay Area. I've known a number of people who are kind of into these scenes and I just can't imagine like going to a place where this is going on and being in a sauna and watching this person get ridden and stepped on and having that be an enjoyable form of entertainment, but uh, I know it's a whole subculture. I'm not I'm not judging it, I'm just saying that ain't for me. That would be such a strange experience for me. Just some really, really cool paneling here. Enjoy this. Uh, it, this almost reminds me of like David Hockney. And also just here, the kind of sadness and loneliness of the characters. Figure two realizes for the first time how much they like figure one. Figure two's favorite color is blue. And there's just a lot of like 
disconnect, I think, a lot of sexual disconnect in this book. You know, you're having this kind of experience where they're at this sauna that seems like a weird disconnect. And here you have this, like, soon after first meeting, figure one and figure two share a beer on figure one's balcony. Figure two talks about being afraid of the ocean. Then figure one talks about how much they love being hit during sex and how it's helped them reclaim and rewire old experiences of abuse. But just that, like, again, like a table of contents almost, like this categorical breakdown of figure one, figure two, this is what's in their box, this is what's in their box. It all seems very uncomfortable and, and disconnected to me. And that seems to be the theme of the book, is just dis discomfort with sexuality, discomfort with people in general, uh, discomfort with bodies. There's there's a lot of like these weird drippy morphy bodies. Here's just another uh, fun little formal conceit that I enjoyed. So this character is visiting a relative in the hospital and the doctor's obviously being really annoying and I just like having the little emojis put in there to accentuate again like kind of how surface level a lot of these interactions are. It, it feels like even in the sexuality there's like this surface level of everyone's acting through pre-planned emojis and pre-planned responses and stuff like that and there's that sense of alienation throughout the book and i think this this really gets it you know it's like you're not really saying anything you're just you're just sending bullshit emojis back and forth and then this one here again like this weird disconnect sex worker thing where this girl has gone and supped with somebody and he's basically asking her to pretend to be his wife because he needs that fake emotive connection to make it wait and then just goes home and like hangs out with with the roommate and so again that that sense of disconnect but really really awesome again compositions i love all this stuff and then here you get a reference back to those opening and closing of the hands so even though this is a series of short stories different characters in all of them there really seems to be uh, some kind of emotional through line throughout the whole thing that's really powerful. And I just think Tommy Paris is just this fantastic cartoonist, fantastic artist, and someone that's really inspiring me and pushing me forward. And I think pushing pushing comics forward into interesting new territory. The conversations is something that I've always picked up in Tommy Paris's work as like really well-written dialogues. I think the first thing that I read now that there was just people walking down the street and I just really, even though they were people, if I remember correct, people that I didn't want to hang out with, it was just a really impressive piece of writing. And so really, really high on Tommy Paris's work and we'll be grabbing anything else. It's, it's uncomfortable work for me, but in the best way. And then just, you know, a real love for craft throughout the thing, like not taking any shortcuts, just really, really putting in the work to develop a style and and always put in like full effort on every page and I just really really appreciate that uh well apparently tommy paris was born in 1989 and lives in melbourne australia so maybe australia feels like the bay area i don't know but this this feels like a bay area book to me especially because of this this scene here it reminds me of the bart station so maybe i'd feel at home <laughs> in australia it'd feel comfortable to me but this is a great book if you can get it I got it from Partners and Sons, but it's printed by Second Cloud. I would really, really highly recommend getting this book and supporting Tommy Parrish's art. If you enjoy what we're doing on the channel and you want to support us, there's two ways to do it. The, the first way is through our Patreon. We have two different tiers of interaction there. The first tier just gets you early access to all our videos and our ev everlasting gratitude. The second tier gets you access to exclusive previews of the books we're working on, including the one I mentioned, Bound and also exclusive access to and voting rights in the ongoing AI webcomic interactive uh, audience participation webcomic experiment that we're doing. And any of the money we get from that just helps us buy the books that we review. So we really, really appreciate that. And we try to turn that back into other creators' pockets. And then the best way to support Living the Line is to support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll go ahead and take a look at one of his products now. House on Fire by Matt Battaglia is a this gorgeous book where Matt's kind of making an emotional response to the the years of COVID and wrapping that into a sci-fi dystopian future that really the sci-fi dystopian's backgrounded and you're fo focused on the emotional journey of two characters in a really beautiful way. And then that's enhanced by Matt's like really awesome, loose, kind of Paul Popish um, dry brush work. And then Sean and Matt have worked to get this second kind of orange spot color 
in there that's going to look really, really beautiful and it has allowed Matt to use his dry brush technique to add tone to the thing too. So um, with Sean's production technique, this is going to be a gorgeous book with a lot of heart. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. What?